Hello, this is Julian with Coffee Reviews, and today we will be reviewing the Aldiamente Wash Process Peru from Langora Cafe. And there's a the bag right there. And Langora, based out of Stjordal, Norway, and this is their second appearance on this channel, having recently reviewed the Kahata AB, a wash processed Kenyan coffee. And as you'd imagine, we purchased both together as we found the prospect of reviewing two of Langora's wash processed coffees to be an enticing one, given that they don't regularly offer too many washed coffees. So it'll be interesting to see how this one turned out, as this right here is day 37. And recipe we went with for this coffee was Langora's recipe, which is a 16.67 to 1 water to coffee ratio, brewed at 100 degrees Celsius, about 212 degrees Fahrenheit, I like this one best through the V60, which indicates a more medium fine grind rose profile for this coffee. Once again, it's kind of interesting as, to be completely honest, I'm not entirely sure if this is an espresso roast as I was trying to find information on this coffee and I could only find information for their espresso roast. But if I have it correct, then I think that the solid coloring on their labeling indicates that it's a filter roast. But once again, I could have that wrong. The roast profile though was even more developed in our most recent review. And with that coffee, I said that it was skewing a little bit more on the developed side of a medium light in terms of that roast profile as this one also seemed to have a fair bit of smoky qualities to it, so I think it still falls in that range, but it also felt a little bit more developed than that Kenyan coffee we had reviewed. So with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and start discussing this coffee. Day 12, first impression, and we opted for the V60 with our standard recipe, and the cup came out significantly more earthy than expected, as there was a slight bit more of a dark fruit, dark berry aspect, and brightness to the cup with a slight bit of nuttiness. There was an okay start as a result, and we move on to day 15 as we opted for the Chemex, and there was perhaps a bit of a tasting error on the first day as the cup is much more soft relative to that slightly harsh earlier experience with a little bit more of a faint, softer stone fruit aspect to complement the classic chocolate and sugary base. So this was significantly better. Let me say this on the first day. Actually, a couple of days after I took those notes, I found out that I tested positive for COVID, and I do think that played a huge role as even water tasted a little lead-like and earthy to me. So I think that that day 12 impression isn't necessarily an overly accurate representation of what I actually got from this coffee. It didn't affect too many of the coffees we were reviewing, just this one as well as the Kenyan, but even that first day I'd experienced from that Kenyan was nowhere near as bad as it was for this Peruvian coffee. So that's worth noting on that day 12 mark. But from this point going forward, everything was notably improved. I just wanted to put that note out there. Day 17 through the April Brewer and the cup does feel like it's the best it's been up to this point as there's significantly more fruit brightness and sugary sweetness to the cup with even a little bit of a complimentary florality as well. A bit more tropicality with the ever-present chocolate base, so significantly better and I'm already seeing this coffee improve a fair bit. Day 20 opted for the V60 with Langora's recipe and the cup is actually the most improved it's been up to this point as it's offering much more of a tropical fruit brightness at the base with an abundance of sugary sweetness. The cup is mostly tropical fruit forward with a bit of mango sweetness by complemented by citric and soft chocolate attribute. Pretty well structured, much improved, a significantly better day, and I was kind of surprised by just how much nice structure there was in this cup. We continue on to day 23. Through the Chemex with Langora's recipe and the fruit aspect continues to play a significant role in the cup as it is right at the forefront with a little bit more of a milk chocolate base and a slightly sugary sweetness. Pretty consistent so far, and that's what I've noticed is even the adjustments have yielded a fair bit of consistency. If anything, just improvement either through the adjustments we've made or with a little bit of time. We continued on to day 26 with Langora's V60 recipe one more time, and I decided to just stick with it going forward as it offered some really nice tropical fruit sweetness in general. This of course being keeping in mind that this is a South American coffee, so it's not going to have maybe the same level as some African coffees, but even then a fair bit of that tropical sweetness. Nonetheless, with that softer chocolate base still maintaining those South American characteristics to this one. Mostly a fair bit of citrus, but for the most part, just a well-structured all-around cup of coffee. Continue on to day 29, it stuck to the same recipe with there being a little bit more in the cup, as it's remained consistent at the forefront with a lot of those sugary fruit aspects to it, but it does settle off into a slightly darker profiled fruit, a little bit more reminiscent of what I would describe as a grape or a berry with a stronger citric attribute, a bit more in line with what I would describe as lime. 
qualities seemed to have accentuated quite a bit on the cooldown as well. And then day 32, final notes we have one more time with the same recipe, and I definitely settled on it being at a pretty good spot. Here on day 37, it's still at a pretty good spot as it's been consistent with the darker fruit profile. And then plenty of the citric attributes yet again, a bit of brightness and a nice bit of sweetness all around. So not too many complaints in that regard. And now we will go ahead and put up the tasting wheel so you can see what we're getting. And we have quite a few level fours. So let's go through those real quick and we'll start with the body level four. And as you'd imagine, I was making these tasting wheels side by side with this coffee and the Kenyan coffee that we'd reviewed from them. So that's why the body is kind of interesting being at the level four, because it definitely offered a fair bit more texture and body than the Kenyan coffee, which insinuates that this one was fairly robust in terms of the body. And as you'd imagine, it had a fair bit of that throughout. So plenty of body in this. Cleanliness, level four. This is a little bit of more of a true level four, even though there was a little bit more smokiness to this one throughout, I would say that it had a very nice and well-structured cup in general. So I was able to overlook a lot of those qualities and uh, put them in place of what was an otherwise pretty clean coffee. So smokiness doesn't necessarily always take away from the overall clarity. It will play a role, but I will say that this is probably on the lower side of the level four too. Finish level four. Don't have too much to add to that, a nice sugary finish to this one, as well as some citric components to it. That was consistent throughout the entire time, so not much to add. Sweetness, level four. Absolutely, and I was kind of surprised by just how much sweetness there was in this one relative to the Kenyan counterpart that it had had. This one right here offered sweetness right at the forefront of it, whether it be in multiple different directions, some slightly tropical fruit components, as well as that chocolate base, which both seem to have some great structure to them, so that works well for me. We continue on to the stone fruit level four. And for me, at times, even though this one was a little bit darker profiled in terms of those fruit qualities, I would say that that sugary stone fruit, most specifically in line with what I would describe as a mango, was ever present. And that's why it scored as high as it did at that level four mark. And it was complemented by that chocolate base. And that's why they're side by side at those level fours, because the chocolate was an ever present and much expected thing for a South American coffee. So those two things going together seems really fitting, especially given that they're side by side in this tasting wheel. Then we have a handful of level threes. We'll start with the acidity level three. Not necessarily the brightest coffee, but given that I started this one by discussing the roast profile, as well as the fact that this is a Peruvian coffee that I don't necessarily think was ever lending itself towards an abundance of acidity. It goes to show that level three always seemed like an ideal spot for this one, and that's just kind of where it ended up for me. Plurality, level three. Once again, I'm not entirely sure if this coffee ever insinuated any sort of floral components. I kind of struggled with getting any sort of information on this given that my um, Norwegian isn't necessarily the best. And once again, I could only find details about this coffee as a espresso roast. So the florality, it was present enough for me and a little bit more of a softer undefined sense. Berry fruit, I'd previously mentioned some dark berry attributes. So something along the lines of a grape or just a darker berry in general seemed present and consistent throughout as well as the citric component, which I was a little bit more in line with the lime characteristic. So those two things kind of fill out the fruit characteristics of it. Caramel level three, yes, there was a really nice caramelized candied sweetness to this cup, which did seem to help kind of balance out the rest of it. And then I think the last thing worth discussing is the smokiness at a level two. As I'd mentioned with the Kenyan coffee, it had a fair bit of smokiness and I kept that down at a one. And now that I'm looking at this tasting wheel, I feel like that's probably the reason is because I made this one side by side with it and this one had a little bit more smokiness to it. I think if anything, that should be on the higher side. Well, it should actually be at a level two minimum. This one should probably be at a level three, but I think I just bumped both of those down. So I was probably being a little generous, but this one had a little bit of a smoky quality to it. Both of them did have a little bit of a smoky quality to it. So that's the only change I would make. But other than that, as I'm looking at this tasting wheel, I do think it's a decent representation of what I was getting from this coffee. All right, so my overall thoughts and impressions of this coffee. I mean, I liked it significantly more than the Kenyan coffee. I feel like that smokiness is going to be a slight sticking point for me, even though I didn't necessarily mention it too much throughout the notes, mostly because I think there are enough other things to kind of make up for it. That's basically to say that I liked this coffee. I didn't love this coffee. I think I went into it with slightly different expectations, but I went into both those Langora coffees with slightly different expectations and what I actually got from both of them. So not entirely sure what's happened between my previous experiences with this coffee roaster and what's happened now. It just seems like two drastically different worlds from the overall impressions I've had of their coffees. 
So the type of person I would suggest this coffee to, and once again, I'm going to start with that rose profile because I'm surprised at how much smokiness there's been present within both of these two coffees, as this one seems to have it throughout in a little bit more abundance. So as long as that's not necessarily a sticking point for you or that's something that you do enjoy, that's the first place I'm going to start. And then from there, you can look for a lot of things, most specifically pertaining to South American coffees, that of course being the chocolate base, a caramelized sweetness, and some nice clarity in general with an above average level of sweetness. And then complements that with a fair bit of some fruit aspects to it, as this one had some nice depth and characteristics to it. And then the other thing I really wanted to point out is somebody that does seem to prioritize a little bit more texture and body, as this one had an abundance of that as well. Put those things together, that's the best direction I can point you towards for this one, and the best way I can leave this review. If you by chance had an opportunity to try this coffee, I'd love to know your thoughts and impressions of it as well. If you're enjoying the content, give this video a like, subscribe if not already subscribed. This right here has been a review of the El Diamante Wash Process Peru from Langora Cafe. Thank you for watching.